Hey guys, it's Angry Admin here. VMware just announced vSphere 7 Update 3 and vSun 7 Update 3. Let's have a closer look. What improvement can we expect from those updates? Let's start our review uh, touching the issue with the SD cards. Here's what the VMware stands for. SD cards and USB devices are unreliable over the long term. The ESX OS data partition should be stored on the local reliable persistent storage device. ESX i7 has a minimum storage requirement of 32 gigabytes. Going forward, SD cards and USB boot devices when used for ESXi will generate a warning and run in degraded mode. The degraded mode error message is Alert! No persistent storage available for system logs and data. ESXi is operating with limited system storage space. Logs and system data will be lost on reboot. VMware recommendation is to use persistent local storage device. Now let's talk about VMware vSphere cluster services, vCLS. If you running vSphere 7, you may see this strange VMs called vCLS appearing and disappearing and many of them has a number like 1, 2, 3, 28, 56 and so on. What are they? So just give you a very quick overview. In vSphere 7.0 update 1, VMware introduced this service called VMware vSphere Cluster Service. VCLS provides a mechanism that allows VMware to decouple both vSphere DRS and vSphere HA from vCenter server. It was introduced to ensure the availability of critical service even when vCenter server is impacted by failure. Those small VMs, they are part of DRS. Although you can disable creation of vCLS, then just remember that DRS will not work and HA will not be able to leverage DRS in case of failure. And if you want to know more about vCLS, let me know in the comment section and I will make a video about it because it's kind of interesting how they work. However, how they improve that in the update 3. So with update 3, they did two things worth mentioning. So the first feature is preferred data store for VCLS VMs. And the second is anti-affinity rule for VCLS VMs. And you may ask yourself or me, why do you need preferred data store for those small VMs? The scenarios could be different. So let's say you have some dedicated storage uh, for some services. Let's say you have a, let's say milestone server, which is the CCTV recording server. And you need that space only for the video footage and you don't want to any other VMs. Now with vSphere 3, we have this option to add data stores to VCLS configuration. And there is an option called VCLS allowed. If we add storage there, then only those data stores will be used for those VMs. And if it comes to anti-affinity rule, let's say the scenario that you need some workload to be able to solely run on the host, uh, the service like SAP, for instance, in order to get this done, you must use anti-affinity rule. This is small caveat. It's not the anti-affinity rule as you know it. Now we have involved compute policy. So it allows you to create anti-affinity rule for VCLS VMs and specific other VMs in your environment 
by creating compute policies and using tags. If you would like to know more how to do it or how to create that policy, let me know in the comment section and I will make another video explaining the process step by step. So let's see what else. The next on the list would be Visual Lifecycle Manager. Visual Lifecycle Manager now supports the editing of depots, including the ability to manage patch, update and recall objects. You also be able to delete objects from the depot. This functionality is available only via API at this time, but will be introduced into user interface later. Vsan compatibility check now expand to disk compatibility. This means that VLCM will check installed drive firmware against the official Vsan HCL hardware compatibility list. Talking about the VSAN, VLCM now also manage standalone VSAN witness nodes. VLCM will be able to patch the witness node for VSAN, if you have one, of course, saving for the time when patching VSAN cluster. This is not supported for shared VSAN witness node, not support yet. Staying with the patching and upgrade subject, we have a look now for VMware Cloud Services, vCenter updates. If you have a VMware Cloud on AWS, now you will see reduced downtime for vCenter Server upgrades. A new vCSA is created as a part of the upgrade process. Database and configuration is copied over the new vCSA and synchronized up. The VCSA switchover process started and the VCSA services on the new VCSA are started. This is the only downtime period. As large scale systems using persistent memory have continued to increase in importance for VMware, it was crucial to enhance support for persistent memory. And now with this update 3, VMware introduced easier way to analyze and tune performance by providing insight into memory bandwidth and usage. In addition, alarms can be set up based on SLA and remediation can be performed based on those findings. Furthermore, vSphere 7 Update 3 includes support for NVMe non-volatile memory express over TCP, which allows ubiquitous TCP IP networking infrastructure to be utilized for storage traffic that is better optimized for flash and SSD. This allows to achieve higher performance and lower latency at reduced cost. Of course, we cannot forget about the Tanzu, which is a big thing now. So in last April with update 2A, VMware and house virtual machine services to help customers deliver AI and developer ready infrastructure. Now with update 3, developers can use Kubernetes commands to provision virtual machines on hosts with vGPU. This will allow developers and DevOps teams build and run the AI apps on GPU-enabled hardware using a self-service model. But this is not everything. VMware, acting on the feedback from customers, which is great, simplified the setup of VMware vSphere with VMware Tanzu, especially on the network side. Now you can get a testbed up and running with a fraction of the effort, so you can focus more on learning how vSphere can operate as your Kubernetes platform. I am very neat to see that, as I remember setting up my cluster was kind of pain. The next very interesting feature 
is simplified operations. V357 AB3 introduced a vCenter server plugin for NSX that will make it much easier for vSphere admins, like yourself and myself, to set up and use NSX networking and security from within the vCenter client without the need to navigate and log in again to NSX Manager. This will allow for simplified installation, workflow and setup of NSX T and seamless user authentication between vSphere and NSX T. Now, this is big thing as well and we are touching DRS. So vSphere distributed resource scheduler gets smarter in the way how it handles maintenance operations to reduce the possibility of disruption for users when host is going into the maintenance mode larger or more critical workloads will now be moved as little as possible talking about the improvements we cannot forget about improved guest operating system so in the vSphere 7 update 3 we can see that following updates full support for cloud init guest data publisher uefi 2.4 support for virtual machines amd support for vbs we have also updates to precision timekeeping ptp now supports the ability to add additional ntp servers as a fallback should the ptp server no longer be operable also the power cli 12.4 is coming soon this version will include directly invoke rest api via power cli new powershell based certificate management commandlets additional support for vSAN via power cli Another interesting feature which we all can benefit is improved error messages. VMware has made error messages cleaner and more detailed, which would be great. And um, this is mainly this is to help with troubleshooting tons of related issues. VSphere 7 update 3 also checks tons of configuration for issues and reports those more cleanly and i will attach a few more resources when you can read more about the this first seven update three and as soon as that update will be available i will let you know please check that space uh, check my blog at angrysysops.com it's angrysysops.com all the information will be available over there including links to the knowledge bases and update itself if you would have any questions about this topic or any other topics chat with me through the twitter and this is my handler if you do have any questions or comments please leave them down below also you can visit my facebook page and the facebook page address is there subscribe to my channel also i want to remind you that i'm running competition for a free vmware exam vouchers for vcp all the details are on my blog angrysysops.com in the competition section okay that's all what i have for you today i hope it was informative and see you in the next one bye